So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for coming in uh, to our daily briefing. Uh, today, uh, we're confirming that Ireland has uh, diagnosed one uh, new case of COVID-19. Uh, the case arises in a female in the east of the country and is associated with travel from northern Italy. We have now 397 people in total who have been tested as of Monday, the 2nd of March, yesterday evening. The position internationally is that there are now 91,783 confirmed cases, 11,480 of which are outside of China. In, Italy, in relation to Europe, in Italy there are now 2,036 confirmed cases, in France 191, in Germany 188, in Spain 151, and in the UK 54. Those are the top five countries in Europe by, by number. Today we had a meeting of the National Public Health Emergency Team and we considered the new ECDC risk assessment that was published yesterday. We decided to keep our case definition, uh, which is used in the, in the diagnosis of cases and the identification of suspect cases uh, as was. Uh, so no change in relation to the case definition for now, but we will keep that under constant review. We have made a change in relation to the advice that we provided to the Department of Foreign Affairs, who have now made that public, in that we, we have recommended the avoidance of non-essential travel to the four provinces of northern Italy, whereas previously it was the 11 uh, um, uh, towns within the four regions of northern Italy. We also considered uh, a paper on new mass gathering guidance and will be in a position to, uh, uh, we hope, publish that after some further discussion with the gov other government departments uh, tomorrow morning. And we listened to the ECDC advice in relation to the moderate high risk assessment it gave in relation to health service capacity issues potentially arising elsewhere in Europe within weeks. We've established four uh, new groups to look as part of our NEFIT process at a number of issues. One in relation to vulnerable people, the identification of those and the raising of consciousness of those. Uh, if this infection comes here and we expect uh, we need to prepare for that eventuality. It is particularly people who are vulnerable, uh, older, people with disabilities, underlying conditions and people in otherwise vulnerable positions across society that we need to be most mindful of. This is a condition for which most people without underlying conditions and who are not in risk groups uh, usually recover well from and experience a mild illness. We're looking at stepping up actions in relation to acute hospital preparedness and we've established a group in relation to that, uh, a group that will be looking at continuity of supply of medicines and medical devices, a little bit like the work we did as part of our Brexit preparedness. And we also want to establish a group to look more specifically at the question of the protection of the health and welfare of healthcare workers and social care workers in particular. The protection of healthcare workers and social care workers is essential to the protection of the health of our population. These are vital public servants in the protection of public health. Uh, we also made a change in relation to the community testing model uh, insofar as now a person who is a suspect case, arrangements can be made to have that test done in the community without the need for referral to hospital for that purpose. And that completes the full, if you like, referral of that service, the testing and holding of people for the outcome of those tests from a hospital-based process, which placed a lot of pressure on the hospitals, to a fully community-based process. And, the, and therefore the referral to hospital not being necessitated unless the case is confirmed or unless the individual for one other reason by clinically might otherwise require to be in hospital. Uh, just in terms of tomorrow, uh, the will as I've referred to, uh, be a senior officials group meeting uh, of the new cabinet committee that the cabinet decided to establish today to strengthen the national response in relation to COVID. And there will also be a meeting of the previously established uh, expert advisory group that gives us uh, specific expert advice on an ongoing basis. So we're happy to take any questions you may have. Uh, can I just, uh, Dr. Tony Hoolan, uh, Fergal Barris, RTE News, can I just ask you about the St. Patrick's Day um, Festival? I, I see where you talk about mass gathering guidelines are to be um, published in the next few days after government review. Is it fair to say that as of now then, obviously no decision has been made about the St. Patrick's Festival, should it proceed or not, but does it look likely that it will go ahead? Uh, as things appear at the moment, it does. So just to make clear to you, the mass gatherings advice, we're publishing that advice 
and guidance specific to the current stage we're in. It's a containment phase at the moment. We'll continue to evaluate that as things go, and our advice in relation to mass gatherings may well change depending on the status of the infection and as part of our response to that, and we'll be guided, as I say, by international advice in relation to that. But as things now stand, uh, um, we, we see no reason why that wouldn't, why that wouldn't take place. Uh, Dr. Hulin, can I just ask, in terms of the second case, you're saying this is uh, in relation to travel again from, from northern Italy. Um, this isn't due to any sort of contact with another case in this country. And, I mean, you, you have updated your travel advice. I mean, what would your message be to people who have returned from Italy who might be feeling quite suspect about this or who might be considering travelling to Italy in the days ahead? So, in relation to people travelling to Italy in the days ahead, they should consult the Department of Foreign Affairs website. They'll see that they've updated their advice uh, consistent with our, with our advice that, we should, that people should avoid non-essential travel to the four provinces. Uh, and there, there is other advice for, for, for other parts of Italy. Uh, but they've accepted that advice, and that's now reflected in the uh, travel advice of the Department of Foreign, Foreign Affairs website. In relation to people coming back from those regions, the advice stays the same as it was, that if pe people to be aware of the symptoms, uh, in the event that they identify symptoms, to self-isolate, to make contact with the GP, and to be guided from there, and that advice remains as was. <clears throat> Dr. Holland, can I ask uh, about the community testing you mentioned? Is that done in a GP's office or in the, pers in the suspect case's home place, or how does that work? The, 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 the provision is made for either, it, but it could be more likely than not be done in the individual's home and the ambulance service personnel who will be trained will travel out to conduct the swab under, under guidance and, and make, uh, through the hospital system, that swab uh, available to the National Virus Reference Laboratory. There's an internal system through which uh, samples travel from hospitals to the National Virus Reference Laboratory. So it will be in the community without the requirement for the individual to come to a hospital. It will reduce the burden on hospitals of both the testing itself and providing isolation facilities simply for the purpose of testing and bearing in mind that we have almost 400 tests uh, completed so far in this country and very, very few at this point, uh, only two people who have tested positive. Uh, so the vast majority of tests that have been conducted so far um, haven't been done in hospitals and putting pressure on the hospital system. That pressure will now be alleviated and that's an important part of our strategy to continue to protect the hospital services and access to those for those who need them most. I know you're working to identify people who may have come into contact with the female in question. Can you talk a little bit more about what stage that process is at and um, how many people have been contacted to date? Well, uh, we've only been notified in, uh, uh, very recently so, uh, this evening. So the contact tracing process has begun and that starts with um, an interview with the uh, case and uh, identifying the contacts and then public health will communicate with the contacts and issue appropriate advice. So that process ha has now begun. Um, <coughs> would you have a gauge just so that we'd know? I think we have agreed previously that we won't give the uh, details on individual cases or contacts for confidentiality reasons. Could I just ask you, just by way of clarification, sorry, various issues there came up today in relation to the first case. Um, can you, um, without obviously identifying whatever, but like the, the, uh, in terms of a person who's a uh, suspect, the, the number one imperative is that they self-isolate. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's, there's no halfway house, right? So um, how long does it take to get a test then you know, from the time person gives the swab to the time they should be immediately self-isolated. How much does it, how long time, what is the average, what is the, the time before you get it, the result of your test? It's as quick in this country as it is anywhere. Uh, if the test is in the laboratory before 10 o'clock in the morning, the, the result will usually be known by lunchtime. And then there's an afternoon, if they're in before um, lunchtime, the result will be known later that day. At the age of an hours, uh, hours, uh, so, uh, so four or five hours for the from the point hours. at which the test is, is, is made available to the laboratory to the point at which the test is known and made available back to the clinician who, 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 who requests
requested the test. Relation to if there was a suspect, if there was a confirmed case in a in an area which is uh, frequented by the public, would, would, would that premises have to be cleaned and disinfected, and would the people who do it have to wear protective gear? Um, the guidance for uh, cleaning uh, uh, in a scenario that you describe are in the infection prevention control guidance on the HPSC website. So that's the um, guidance, obviously, that would be recommended for, for cleaning of a, a premises in, in that scenario. virus kind of be on the surface for a couple of hours so I mean you wouldn't want anybody a big group going in there anything like that I mean it should be yeah. disinfected we're just so ordinary disinfectant isn't that it yeah. should be disinfected though yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the virus lasts on surfaces for in the region of three to four hours but um, in the home for uh, cleaning usual household disinfectants are fine can I just ask um Obviously, in other countries where there's been multiple cases, as there are now in the Republic of Ireland, once you get your first few cases, it, it does tend to, or at least it has tended to, uh, roll on, snowball a little bit more from this point. I mean, there will be a lot of people who are concerned this evening that we have now got uh, multiple cases in terms of two cases here in the Republic. What would your message be? I mean, how quickly do you believe that we will see further cases confirmed here? So as we, we've been saying in recent days, we continue to expect to see isolated importation of cases like the ones we've had. We don't necessarily plan on the basis that it's going to be confined to that. Into our planning assumptions, we build the risk assessment that the ECDC published on Monday that says the risk of widespread community transmission happening within weeks is a possibility somewhere else in the European region. We're not necessarily saying we believe that's going to be in this country. Uh, there is no evidence of local transmission or community transmission having taken place in this country. And if you look at a lot of other European countries, including those that have had multiple cases, uh, uh, and like our nearest neighbours in the UK, they have uh, put in place infection prevention control procedures around those cases and have avoided community transmission there as well. Uh, good, good evening. Obviously, there's a lot of information going around on social media, a lot of it not very accurate at the moment. Uh, and we saw the incident today with briefing that was coming from the Department of Health to uh, journalists actually not being accurate and then being right and being wrong. So I just wanted to know, have you identified where the problem was there in the communications internally that then got out? Because obviously trust is such an important part in all this process and will be in the next few weeks. So just to be clear, like, social media is not a place to go for information uh, to rely upon in terms of what to... Uh, to do, uh, to, to go to for information about the nature of this particular illness, how one should respond, etc. There are trusted sources of information. We continue to direct people to hse.ie, which is the one-stop shop, if I can call it that, of information that covers every eventuality and has links to the HPSC website and the guidance and so on. Anybody who has access to social media has access to hse.ie. Anybody who is thinking about travel abroad needs to go to dfa.ie, which is the Department of Foreign Affairs uh, website. These are the trusted sources of information that people should rely upon. Because obviously people will be relying on, on traditional media sources and we are relying on the department as well to give accurate information. To be fair to you, most of it has been absolutely fine. Yes. It's that one, one case today. I'm just wondering, have you identified where that problem is so we can be sure there won't be a repeat of it and can so, have that trust? So we made clear in public today that there has been uh, a number of uh, instances of inaccurate or hoax letters circulating and things purporting to be true, rumours, things of that nature. And we try to raise consciousness of that fact. Uh, the information that comes from the Department of Health is reliable. Uh, the information that, that uh, is circulating in social media today about a specific letter, there is a correct letter which issued from the contact tracing team to potential contacts arising from the case. Uh, and that's the position. Um. Sorry, just a few questions. Um, uh, was the change to community testing um, made on foot of representations by doctors, for example, doctors in the emergency department? Uh, I would say no, uh, not, certainly not directly, Paul. The, um, it was an analysis of ours going back some weeks that we could see that there was significant pressure on the hospital system really arising directly because the testing was focused in that environment. And while that might have been sustainable in small numbers of cases, as I say, the number of tests additional, the people tested this week has increased by about 300 or slightly over 300. Uh, and last week we made a decision to uh, 
uh, enable those after testing who are well enough to go home to isolate at home waiting for the result and that took some of that pressure away from the hospital. Today's part of the decision was to take the testing part of the process away from the hospital as well uh, and that's alleviated pressure on the hospitals and it's also uh, something which potentially is protective of the health of workers in hospital environments as well. And so who, who is going, which type of staff are going to be carrying out the tests? Uh, so mostly paramedical crew. Paramedics, yeah. ambulance service and so on. Yeah. And sorry, the other question I had. Yes, is there not a case for more testing to be done? Uh, we've only one place where you can do testing uh, in VRL. Um, um, and in, I noticed in Britain, for example, they've started testing people with un severe unexplained respiratory disease or something, you know, just to see if there's more of it out there than, we, than, we, than we're aware of. Uh, so, so, th so the first um, uh, part of that, we continue to um, uh, to test people who are suspect cases, obviously. Uh, we've been giving some consideration through the expert advisory group to the question of the role of testing in, in asymptomatic people, and, and that's something that's being looked at. We don't have full and final advice in the expert group, but they do see a value in that. But there's going to be further, if you like, nuanced guidance on that coming from the expert group to us next week. That's something we keep continuously under review. Is there any update on the male at the centre of the first case? Can you say how he's doing? I'm afraid we can't comment again on individual cases. How likely is it that there are more cases currently in the Republic of Ireland than the two that we know of? We don't think it's likely. We think that the message is getting through to the public uh, about the vigilance they need to have around symptoms, particularly if they've come back from an affected area. Um, and we have no reason to believe that there's community transmission that we are unaware of. Um, uh, and so we continue to be able to assure people uh, that the risk of an individual in this country today picking up this infection in the community in Ireland is extremely low. You mentioned protecting health workers. Uh, has there been any discussion about financial support from the state should workers need to take two weeks self-isolation? So, as part of this response, obviously the focus is on the health system. We're focusing on measures that need to be taken to protect the health of the public. Some of the measures that we now consider are having wider implications, if you like, for other sectors, decisions that might have to be taken by other sectors. And we're now working now through the Cabinet Committee, which is going to be chaired by the Taoiseach, obviously, and the work in support of that of the senior officials to address any of the kinds of intersectoral uh, responses that might be needed to strengthen the health response. And so we've, we've had extremely good cooperation across government departments to support the work that we're now trying to do. We've started the engagement with social partners and so on to raise consciousness uh, and trying to pull everybody together, if you like, into a, a One Ireland response uh, to all of this. Pardon? Would you like to go? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thanks for your patience. Sorry for delaying you tonight.